Okay, so we are now recording and Sandra, can I just formally say welcome and thank you. I really appreciate you making the time to, to be here tonight to, to participate in this conversation and to share some of your um, amazing creativity and expertise with us. Um, I've been privileged to know you for quite a few years now and, and, and I, I love your work, your work and I really enjoy um, the, the conversations that we've had over the years and I, I've been on a number of your branding clinics which was something that, that you did at another stage in, in life. Um, so I'm really it, it's pleased and honoured that you um, have decided to join us tonight. So I'm going to let you say more about, about, about yourself and how you got into brand coaching and the full kind of um, portfolio of stuff that you're doing today. Um, but I'll just hand it over to you. And can I also say, can I also join in saying welcome to everybody else who's, who's here? And um, I think others will probably join us over the next few minutes. And just to, to, to remind people that um, please do um, come in with any questions or comments, because I know that Sandra enjoys that interaction. So with that, Sandra. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. I'll let you keep an eye on the chat. Um, sure. Yes, of course. Yeah, I see someone's just. <laughs> I'll, I'll be, my attention will be split. Um, uh, yes. Uh, no, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Christian. I'm uh, Dave was just saying that he's not usually he's not usually shy or hiding. He was just eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice for me to know I'm not just talking to people who might not even be in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to and I want to hear questions and comments and uh, so. Anyway, I'm delighted all of you would make the time to be here. And um, as Christian said, we've known each other for several years. And um, the way I ended up doing brand coaching was for many, many years, for probably 25 years, I worked in the world of big branding as a graphic designer. And I was doing the visual branding and strategy for really big companies, multinational companies, like some some of the companies I worked on aspects of their branding or their full branding were companies like Apple and Anheuser-Busch and Johnson and Johnson, you know, these massive companies that have lots of subsidiaries. And I got an incredible education in what business is about. Like when you're branding a big company, these companies would bring me in, I'd sign an NDA and then they'd tell me everything that was going on and, why they were rebranding and often it was signifying a shift in the business or they were trying to create a new image because something had gone terribly awry. Um, and after doing that for a long time, I was quite burned out and I decided after taking a couple years off, I finally decided to become a coach. And early on in the, my coaching business, I was talking to this guy who's a very successful executive coach in LA and I was giving him some branding advice. He was saying, what can I do for you? And I said, well, I feel like I'm supposed to have a niche and I don't know what that would be. And he said, well, what are you already an expert at? And I was like, branding, but that has nothing to do with coaching. And I'm done with that world. And um, I had quite a reaction when he suggested that I bring coaching to the branding conversation. Anyway, about a week later, I had what I'd now understand was an insight. Uh, those of you who understand the three principles, I had kind of new thought around how coaching could be part of the branding conversation. And within a week, somebody called me who actually needed this, this thing I had invented. And so brand coaching was born. And a few years into doing this, I was always doing regular coaching alongside the brand coaching, just depending on what people needed. I stumbled upon the three principles through a course Michael Neal was offering. And the three principles just deepened my understanding of what I was already seeing. And those of you who know the principles, as you're learning the principles, they remind us of what we already know. And because I've been looking in this direction for so long, I had been seeing quite a lot. And one of the fascinating things I'd been seeing, I didn't really have words for until I stumbled on the principles was that I'd been witnessing in these big companies, I, already had, I always had a sense of what companies were gonna do well and which weren't. And all I was sensing was a deep alignment with what we would call mind 
or God, you know, something deeper. And I also was witnessing the fact that in these big companies, when there was, when the person at the top, and it didn't matter how big the company was, and I see this today still, doesn't matter how big it is, the person at the top has a really clear vision and it's aligned with who they are, like their personal preferences, what they love, what makes them come alive. It gives the power, it gives the company uh, just a different presence. Like there's a clarity that shines through. Like to me, branding is all about that core vision. What are you really up to and why are you doing it? And when that's clear, like with the person at the top always creates the whole culture of a, of a company. It doesn't matter how big the company is. Like when a company gets a new CEO, often people are freaked out because the culture will shift to reflect that person. But also that vision, they hold a vision. So I assume most of you here are entrepreneurs. Like I've, I've been an entrepreneur most of my life. And it's the same hold true, holds true for you. And one of the mistakes I see people make and creating their own businesses is they don't look to what makes them unique. Like they wanted, they want to create a business that looks like somebody else, like somebody that's obviously doing well, like say <clears throat> Michael Neal, you know, like he's got a big audience and he, you know, he's quite successful. But if you really see what he's doing, it's very unique to him. Like he's creating stuff that interests him and that he loves. And that creates a different energy. Like even when I talk about branding, I'm sure you can sense, especially around the brand coaching, I have a lot of passion about this. Hmm. And that passion is actually what creates resonance and makes people want to hire me. Like when they talk to me about this work, they feel my passion for it and my clarity and they want to hire me but it's uniquely me. Like, and I'm not saying that as a coach, you need to take whatever your understanding is of our experience and combine it with something else. But there are ways that you are uniquely you that you can use to communicate about your business that are going to make it more powerful. Does that make sense? It, it really does to me, Sandra. And I was thinking of an example I had when I, I, I think I was on one of your branding calls and, and you asked a similar question, you know, when you really drill down, what is it you offer? And what came to my mind was, well, that I, I can help people to find happiness. And, and, and you know, and it reflects my own experience of being quite, quite, unhappy or certainly striving and and um not sort of not happy as it as opposed to unhappy perhaps would be more accurate for many years and then discovering how to be happy but as i said it it felt really lame i mean it just felt oh i, I want to be i want to help people be happy it felt but but you kind of stuck with it and said well you know you know what you know what an extraordinary thing if you if you are able to do that and it's it sort of stayed with me and um i think i have other things as well that i offer but 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 that part is key now and i i no longer see it as lame and i think until that moment i was trying to, to sort of come up with something more um with more gravitas you know something more more punch and and from there you know sometimes i think in this work we talk about um you know kind of evolution and inevitable evolution and i've seen that even in my old business of law that it, it is absolutely the case it was for me and it is for other people that your best self your most effective lawyer is your authentic self you know there's something simpler and more accessible and more available than i was making it until i had that conversation with you so I don't know if that's a, a kind of example of... of no, it's, um, I love it. Sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. No, that's it. That's it. And, and, and I was wondering if you had other examples of where you'd... I mean, perhaps, you know, I know, I know that, that there may be issues of confidentiality, but even in general terms of where you've helped someone, you know, kind of just hone that, that essence or um, enable them to, to see it. Because I think often it's the, until they see it, it's the elusive obvious. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I think similar to you, like I, I would suspect you did see it, but you just didn't think it had value. Yeah, yeah. And 
the simplicity of what you saw is so powerful. Hmm. And we tend to think that's not enough. Like for me, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's the brand coaching or just, you know, transformative coaching, I do some mentoring and I do a variety of things, Mm -hmm. corporate trainings. I really want people to see their brilliance, their creativity, Mm. the power in that. Because no matter what you do, you're bringing the uniqueness that is you to it. Mm -hmm. And if you're creating a business and a vision for that business, it, it, ideally it should be related to that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I know, like one of the things I have people do when I do the branding process with them is I have them look at kind of major events in their life. And there are things that influence us, that impact us. Like one for me was early in my career, I worked for this man named Clement Mock and he was incredibly brilliant. It was, we were basically a startup helping launch a bunch of startups. This is in the nineties, early nineties, you know, people that were leaving Apple and founding some of the early uh, high tech companies, brilliant innovators. And Working for Clement, I was so inspired. Like I love being swimming in the sea of innovation. Our clients were all innovators. We were innovating. We were using the Mac before it could really do very much. And he just had this knack for hiring people that were true collaborators. Like people were really, really good at what they did and gave their ideas away. Like we all supported each other wholeheartedly in in the midst of a really, really busy work environment, you know, working lots of hours. And that impacted me in in a couple of ways, like the fact that I still love innovation. And I used to say that I like to work with innovators and change makers, but now I think that everybody has that capacity. Especially you. And if I work with people, I want to bring that out. Like we all have that capacity to create and, and have it be uniquely us. And also that spirit of collaboration, like that's the way I work with people. I want to see you create something cool and I'm, and I'm in there with you in that creative process like that's that's a, an event that really helped form me and we all have things like that that we can reflect on yeah yeah i'm curious can i open it up for questions a of little course, bit of course of course can i ask a question i'm curious if anybody be willing to share just why they're here, what's, what are you curious about? Or... Yeah. I'll go. Great. Hey, Dave. Hi. Um, hi, Sandra. I haven't hi. Um, encountered you before, but I've been attending the past few conversations that Christian has hosted. And so I just sort of trusted that, um, you know, she's, offering access to somebody who I would enjoy connecting with and learning from. And I, uh, I don't think I even realized when I put this in my calendar at first that I was about to make a decision to completely rebrand everything I'm doing and a nearly three and a half year daily video series, launch a whole new Facebook group, um, you know, uh, with a kind of loosely cobbled together transition plan to archive one with more than 6,000 members. Um, you know, there, there's obviously lots to it. Um, but that's the answer to your question. How did, how did I end up here? I think a little synchronicity. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Nice. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time online anymore. So, um, but I'm fascinated by whatever you're doing. I'll leave it to, uh, well, you clearly have a big audience and that's, that's very cool. Well, but part of the thing for me is that the, the audience is not that audience is not really engaging and hasn't been interested in the way that I've been bringing the inside out understanding into 
um, <laughs> well, for me, it's this, it's this intertwined nature of how I'm sharing what that audience cares about, which is intentional laughter. And I've been using intentional laughter to share the inside out understanding. And that's not why most of those people have, you know, become part of that group over the past few years. And so I'm, I don't, I don't need a big group of people who aren't engaged and don't care. I need just the people who do care and want to look in this direction. And so it's, been hard really to <laughs> it almost feels like I have to quit an addiction of making a video every day <laughs> <laughs> I mean if you didn't put any rules on it I yeah. I mean if this isn't about branding but I think it's fascinating the topics you're touching upon like how do we get people to engage and a lot of people aren't interested in the three principles understanding because it's so disruptive. They have to give up their suffering if they really see it. They, not that they have to give it up, but they will. Yeah. It changes us at such a fundamental level when we understand where our experience comes from. Yeah. yeah. And I've... some people just aren't there. You know they're not ready or they don't want it they don't want another they don't want a new anything yeah what what does that sound do i sound like you know like gray clouds <laughs> no, no no actually no i i i was gonna share my observation that i think tracks with that um you know my my observation of people in the global laughter community and you know my group is just a small fraction of that um they've become dependent on the techniques of laughter yoga you know we <laughs> we learn to laugh on purpose we say we're laughing unconditionally we don't need jokes and comedy and humor we can just choose to laugh <laughs> And we can, we can. And then we're taught all these ways to do it. Yeah. And if you really learn it, you have an embodied understanding of it that says, actually, that's all you need. You don't need the techniques of how to do it this way or that way. And I'm not the only one who's realized that, mm -hmm. but I'm the only one who's pivoting my very visible role in the global laughter community to kind of repeatedly make the case that if we're going to keep growing in what we're sharing about laughter, and if you as an individual member of this global laughter community want to keep growing in your personal life, your relationship, your career, all those sorts of things, you have to begin to recognize that understanding is far more valuable than technique. And if you can open yourself up to that, you can open yourself up to all these other insights that I've had about how laughter is helping me see and share the inside out understanding. And I, that sounds amazing to me. Like, and there you are innovating, like in that, like yeah. in that arena. Mm -hmm. And you'll find your people, like the people yeah. who are ready to hear that are going to just soak it up. Yeah, so after nearly three and a half years, I made the final video on Monday, two days ago. I launched a new group called Think Less, Laugh More, Play As Big As You Dream. And there's a, you know, like I said, a, a, a rough transition plan that is underway. And, and all of it, like the, when I finally made the decision to stop the videos, everything else just started showing up like, okay, yeah, these are the things I've known I needed to do. <laughs> I haven't felt ready to do them for one reason or another. You know, I've had too much thinking about it. And as soon as I made the decision, you know, subtracting the commitment to the daily videos, it opened, 
it opened the floodgates to what I could do next. And it's been revitalizing, I think, in my excitement level, my energy, just like you were saying. You know, I, I think um, you know, ev everything that you pointed to that sounded like you were saying, you know, this is kind of like a, like a, a composite, you know, a hallmark of many people that I've worked with, you know, respecting the non-disclosure, that sort of stuff. Like that summary that you gave is, is pretty much what I'm experiencing right now. So yeah, it was, you know, really, okay. yeah, really Thank resonating. You for sharing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Kathy, you were nodding your head. Can I call you out? I was just connecting with what he said about um, that recognition of um, that that all these techniques are there, and yet um, it's all additive, and and that those aren't necessarily needed. So I was just connecting with what Dave was saying. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, Richard, not to put you on the spot or anything, but in a recent conversation we had, you mentioned something about, uh, about branding. How's this landing with you? Oh, you're muted. Let me unmute yeah. you. Oh, was... oh, can't seem to get him unmuted. Oh. Right there. I think you're unmuted now. Cool. Um, yeah, I am interested in branding and, and from a, a very uh, uh, economic sort of reason. I'm, um, I, I, I am a business owner and I've um, acquired uh, three businesses over the last 20 years or so and um, made profit from all of them. Um, and it, it seems to me that uh, going concern businesses are, you know, their value is their brand, you know, what, what's, what their reputation is, what the, uh, what the value is they add to, to the world, to the, to the, to the clients that, um, contract their services. So yeah, I'm probably the least spiritual uh, person on this call. Um, really, just wanting to find out ways to uh, uh, not make more money, uh, make more uh, informed choices uh, in the way my business is my business is perceived, and then eventually to to sell it. To, to, to have a good brand to pass on to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember um, it was prob probably 25 years ago, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, there was a guru that kind of came around and charged enormous amounts of money to go to a hotel and listen to him talk about branding. And there were handouts and... Um, it was in the days of uh, overhead projectors and writing on stuff and all of that. And it was, it's all, always seemed a bit of a mystery to me. It's always this sort of dark art of, uh, of branding that only certain people really understand and grasp. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm interested in chasing that. Uh, and I'm sorry I, I, I joined the call late. Um, I, have, I have an elderly dog who has needs, and I, it kept me um, kept me from joining on time. Um, but what I, when I uh, joined in, I, I heard you talking about authentic self and uh, creativity and innovation, and um, and that's the stuff. You know, that's at the at the heart of what I'm looking for. Why I've, why this uh, uh, group, this 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 talk, um, the Zoom is important to me. Mm -hmm. huh. It's interesting to hear. I mean, when you say you're the least spiritual, I just I don't think there's a hierarchy. You know, we're all 
we're all expressions of the divine. Um, and you sound like you're a, a businessman and you've got your eye on that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if there was a question in what you said, but I really enjoyed listening to that. Like you're, you're, there's always some incredible creativity involved in acquiring companies and keeping them thriving. And I would assume you know a fair amount about business if you've done this over and over. Um, yeah, I've learned by some, some uh, I've made some mistakes. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, for the next um, half an hour about my successes. And then I'd like to spend two or three minutes telling you about my failures. And uh, I've had both. Yeah, and I think that's normal for any business that we try things. Yeah. Some things fail, some things succeed, and it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Like there are times when I launch something in my business that I'm all excited about and nobody else wants it. They're not interested. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean I need to stop doing what I do. It's just like, well, that, that idea didn't land. Oh, well. What do I want to create next? Yeah. You know, like there's always this intersection between what's on offer and what the market wants. Like I, I highly recommend having passion involved in your business because most businesses go through slow periods. And if you're more, if you're passionately connected to what you do, you're more likely to hang in there through the rough spots. Mm -hmm. And every business has its ups and downs. It's just normal. I know for me as a coach, sometimes I'm just a little bit tired of coaching. I'm, I get a little burned out. You know, I just need a break. And I'll let my business uh, get a little smaller for a while. You know, and then when I'm more energetic, I, I ramp it back up. Yeah. yeah. But I'm a, I'm a solopreneur, so it's easy for me to see how I'm driving that. Yeah, that was going to be my next, my, my question, my observation from what you just said is, yeah, I can, I can be really passionate about it, but I um, have a, a staff and um, it doesn't mean the same, that business doesn't mean the same to me, to me as it does to them. You know, when you're starting out, the business is your baby. You love it, nurture it stay up with it till one, two, three in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy, the guys and girls that you have on, you know, not, not high money because it's a new start, not, not sure. fantastic salaries. They're not passionate. And uh, um, encouraging that, that passion and ownership is, um, you know, uh, something I would, uh, um, like to learn also. Yeah, well, I, and I think branding can be an aspect of that. Like I've seen when companies have a really clear vision, really clear vision about what they're up to and why. One of the things you can do is hire people that, that can line up behind that vision. Like, and it's a fascinating thing when you already have employees, like how do you, it's the same thing Dave was sort of saying, like, how do you engage them? Yeah. You want them to be as passionate as you. That's part of what helps a business work. You know, you want them to be working at their best. Are you involved in the three principles, Richard? Uh, yes, I have been for um, um, coming up two years now. Yeah. Yeah, I would assume you were, but... Um, I've gone past the stage of agnosticism. I'm, a, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Well, part of the reason I ask is it's, it's fascinating to me that um, one of the things that happened when I was learning the principles is I noticed when I was doing design work, like I still do a little bit of design work, but when I would do design work, I was able to produce in two hours what used to take me eight and I was already considered really fast. I had been doing design a long time and, and I was shocked at how my productivity went up. 
and and I think that's a, like learn, understanding the principles impacted me in that way. And, and it's why I love taking it into business. I'm curious if you've brought the principles into your business. Not yet. No, no, I haven't uh, as yet. There's a, there's a plan to do that. Um, yeah, but uh, not yet. No. Yeah, I, like I can't tell you how to run your business, but, but that vision can inform a lot of things. Yeah. You know, like what are you, if, if, you know, if you run a shoe factory, you know, people who love shoes, <laughs> great employees. <laughs> you know, or people who love the craft, if you're hand making things. I don't know, I'm making this up because mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of business you run, but, but you get the gist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Because I think that, I think that the brand, that vision, like a lot of times people think of their branding as the visual expression and that's one aspect of branding, but it's also that core vision influences all sorts of things. Like how you choose what your company is going to do. Does it fit with that vision or does the vision need to shift? Because I also think of companies and brands as living entities and they grow and change as we do. Richard, I don't know if you wanted to say something else there before I butt in again. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, 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 that, that, I thought that was lovely. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and, and I just love that little thing you said about becoming more efficient, not e efficient, just quicker, that everything became easier after. Surprising things. I mean, I doubt you went into coaching or the principles to cut your time of designing. It's one of these little benefits that that occurs um what, well what i noticed was you know in, in design and in a, any any kind of work where you need to be creative i just stop resisting my ideas i used mm. to think i would used to just overthink ideas i had and then i just i would just put them down and be like this is this is a good idea this is good enough and i would go with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool and, you yeah. know i would trust i would trust my intuition more Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that that I have noticed is just an increased clarity. You know, I do some work that's not um, it's not part of my main business. You know, like um, I'm I'm on um, a board or I, 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 and I do some sort of business um, advice. But I, I and I have done I have been on boards and things in the past and had that kind of governance role but I found out a real clarity that has come you know just very very simple things and yet it's interesting to me how other people in the room are not seeing those very very simple things you know, but that, that I think that and I suppose it's another manifestation of the clutter falling away and um, you know that that kind of mm -hmm. focus back to you know the bottom line or the time scale or you know you know whatever it is and um, and that's very, you know, it's very nice. It's that, um, but I could also feel a kind of question formulating when you were talking to both Dave and, and Richard. And um, it's around, so I imagine people on this call and maybe some of the people who watch the recording afterwards are in the business of sharing the principles one way or another and possibly butting up against that um, resistance or, or lack of interest. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts or, or questions you might pose to help people um, become clearer in their offering or... Uh, well, How, how's I branding helpful there? I think there's a, I, I think that, at least for me, what I've seen serve me is to not be selling the principles, mm. but to be mm -hmm. client focused. What do they want? Yeah. And pointing towards the principles in a way that's relevant to whatever it is they want. Like, like I'm often working with people who are creating businesses. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs or people who are like creative types. Somebody who's writing a book, like what's in the way of their creativity. Like there's, there's a lot to see there that relates to the principles. But my eye is always on what they want. And it's one of the things I see in the principles community where people get lost is they've been so impacted by the principles that they're just selling the principles. And people aren't really interested in that in general there's the rare person 
who wants to be disrupted, but mostly people want, like there's the reason they're going to pay money to a coach or some sort of practitioner is because they've got something they want. Maybe they don't want to suffer anymore. They want to create something, you know, there's, there's a, they want a better relationship. And so if you're not talking about that with them, you're going to lose them really quick. Mm whatever it is that they want. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with our businesses. Like I don't lead with the principles on my brand coaching website, but it's all about the principles. Like the work I do with people, I feel like I use brand coaching as a different doorway into the principles. And I want people to wake up to the truth of who they are in their business, you know, and have, they have their business be an expression of who they truly are. Because also what I've seen when that happens, people are engaged in their business in a different way. Yeah. Does that make, I, I know I might be saying something people don't want to hear about not mm -hmm. selling the principles, but. No, no that has also, that's, it's, it's so cool because it's actually been one of my insights that there's a difference between what I have seen for myself and how it helps me and, and then the services that I offer other people. And, and, you know, so I've kind of reached a similar conclusion and, and increasingly what I see is that the, the principles is in the background, the inside out understanding is behind it. And, and, and sometimes there are moments when it, um, you might, you know, I might say something to, to somebody or, you know, ask them if they'd be interested in seeing a different perspective on that, you know, specifically, but it's very much um, the, 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 the contract, the relationship is about what do they want to achieve through our working together. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love the way you said that. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm in the business of teaching the principles and I teach the principles. <laughs> You know, the principles are true. They're true everywhere, including in business. Including yeah. In business. yeah. Yeah. You know, they're just, they serve us always. Yeah. Yeah. There's an expression that um, some of our colleagues use that um, subtractive, subtractive psychology. And I like that because that does seem to be an outcome of, uh, the more deeply we understand this, or indeed just asking, asking the right question of something can begin to allow something that's on their mind to dissolve so that, and, and I guess this is back to what you were saying before, you know, that, that overthinking of thing, overthinking things becomes less of an issue. Being clearer is um, more of the norm. And um, yeah. Yeah. And that clarity, that's where you want to create your business from. Like yeah. the longer yeah. you're around the principles, you start to distinguish the difference in, when you're feeling clear and when you're not, or what's like entrusting new thought. Mm, mm -hmm. Like that's a really cool place to grow your business from. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be kind of disruptive. Some of that new thought <laughs> our ideas to our ideas, to our thinking about what our business should be and how it should look. Yeah. But that's yeah. really trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very different thing, it seems to me, than um, making decisions or plans or um, resolutions from a place of insecurity in order to try and feel better. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd be curious for Richard, for example, you know, just by kind of setting an intention to see, like, what would engage, or Dave, like, what would engage these people more? Like what you could see, like the principles will show you if you keep looking in that direction, not sort of forcing it, but just to look and be curious. Like what, what can I see about that? Oh, you're muted, Christian. To Dave. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you're unmuted. You looked as though you were about to come in there. Oh, no, I, I wasn't. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I always can, but no, I wasn't. <laughs> I thought. Um, <laughs> I, I want to ask Drawer. I like. I know Drawer. I, I'm curious if you're there, Drawer. If you can turn your camera on, what what you think of all this? Ah, maybe not. I'm ah. I'm I'm here. Um, I'm just curious. You know, I'm launching a new business, and um, you know, was uh, thinking about you to possibly brand it or logo it it's not i'm not there yet but just curious so i saw it i said you know just gonna jump in and listen for a bit yeah but but you're also a very experienced businessman that's why i was just curious well i you know somehow the more i dive into the principles i uh i uh don't put my experience as the thing if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, but it, but also, I think if you don't discount. No, no. I, I, what, what life is, like, I think we're all on these paths and life has been teaching us something, you know, and we can use those things in our work or not. But we yeah, have. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's, it, naturally, it, it, it comes naturally yeah. uh, when needed. Yeah. And, um, I kind of like can now to really point people more for their own wisdom, for their own insights, for their own experience. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not discounting all of what I know, but uh, I'm not putting it as, as a front thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah. It's like for me, I don't, I know I'm well qualified to do brand coaching and branding in general. Mm hmm but I don't think it's why people hire me. Yeah, yeah, I get that. That I get very much, yeah. I think they feel my passion for it and that I have some clarity around it. And um, if they understand business, they might understand that, that you wanna have clear branding. Yeah, So. I totally get that. Yeah. It's, it's fairly simple. It's more, it's more, I feel like my whole business is built on connection. Mm. Mm. Cause no okay. matter the size of the company, I'm still working with people and. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, what occurs to me when you say that, Sandra, and, and why I really enjoy conversations with you is that I think, I think you do have passion and an enthusiasm. Um, but more than that, you, you do have such a, a kind of insightful clarity and it always feels good um, speaking to you know hopeful you know a sense of where i am is fine who i am is enough you know that, that, I, that there's something to, it's, it's not that the the solution is a way out there it's kind of almost unattainable that there's there's that i can you know, i can start right here you know there's something that i can you know just do or acknowledge right now and i think that's um but it but it it, it doesn't feel like that's some kind of flattery or pandering but you, you know that you're seeing that as a truth um i do believe i i feel that with people like that yeah, yeah you are enough yeah whatever you have to offer the world is enough yeah you might have to search a little bit to find your audience that wants to pay you for it if you're creating a business you might you might have to look at like what you love to do and what the world wants a little bit but you're enough. You are. I mean, I feel like that was that was a hard won insight for me. Like to have <gasps> so broken for so long and then to really get like, oh my God, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. And what I have to offer the world is fine. And the people who who need my services find me. Like I'm so delighted by the people who find me and work with me. I'm so touched. I, 
and being in connection with you when you bring that along is it's um it seems to make it easy to to tune in or to receive that my my creative i'll speak for myself my creativity or to to notice that fresh ideas are coming a different perspective you know it's that boom 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 you know that's um that can, i mean i think that can happen in 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 many um co conversations with with colleagues but i think but especially when it's based in that that insight that incisiveness that clarity about what's going on it's um a, it's a sense of um, being in very safe hands but in a, a very dynamic process hmm. thank you thank you it's lovely to hear oh Can kathy's you... got kathy's got her hand up kathy shall i unmute you i've got it good <laughs> cool so um this is uh, i got on here because i keep missing um christian's uh zooms and i finally saw this one pop up so i signed up real quick without even knowing what it was about <laughs> um and i don't know why i keep missing them but i'm going to try to make sure i get them further but when i saw it was about branding i thought now that's fascinating and hearing you talk um is fascinating too because i after being an employee since i was 16 years old until last june um i never thought really about branding um except for presenting myself a certain way um like in job interviews and in in sessions with people and and things like that and and since i've started my own business which is coaching um i have everything i have learned about branding has all been related to those visual aspects those those parts that uh, the colors you use, the words you use, the you know all of the the types of things, and and it has seemed so much like impression management to me, um, rather than seeming like me presenting my vision in any way. And right. so to hear you talk, Sandra, is just fascinating to me because I had not ever been able to reconcile the idea of branding and the principles um, and that inside out perspective because the branding has all been so external has been so like i said more like impression managing the impression i make out here mm -hmm. rather than coming from in here so to hear you talk is really fascinating no i i feel like like you get what i'm talking about and that's why i think a lot of people where branding experts are a little bit lost. Mm -hmm. Like that it, it should be an expression that comes from the inside of the person, the inside of the company. Like it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you want to put your best foot forward. I think that's just general good business advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but a true expression of you mm -hmm. is going to be impactful. Like it, there's something about, like I always encourage people to write their own websites, like it being in your voice, mm -hmm. being a real reflection of you. Like I was, I was, I brought up a few websites I thought I could share with you guys just because you can feel the resonance with the their people that I've worked with. And my goal is always that you feel the resonance with the person and how unique each one is and powerful in their own different ways. Should I share them really quick because it feels relevant? Or did you want to say more, Kathy, before I do that? No, that's great. I'd, I'd like to see. I did, I did uh, provide the words for my website. I just don't have my website launched yet. I still have a last piece that I want to do on it. But, um, but I, did, I did provide the words for it. And, um, and I think that that fits me very well. Yeah, so, but I, I would like to see what you have too. Well, and I'll just, it's just, I'll just show you really briefly because it's, um, I assume I can do this. Like here, I, I work with Rohini Ross on her website. And I know when we first launched it, uh, her business has grown quite a bit since we first worked together, but people just commented how, how much it felt like Rohini, both the images and, the words 
Um, and then just for a, a different, just to give you a different feeling, like here's someone else I worked with who's also a coach who has a background in the military and he does equine work with, um, with people. And again, people were just like, you get such a strong feeling of him and his particular orientation towards service uh, versus, here, I have one more I want to show you. Um, like here's Peter Wright, whose background is in business, and he does both coaching and consulting. You know, and, and you get a different feeling each time you look at these. Yeah. And, and it's, just, it's just so you get a sense of, I hope you can see that each is a powerful expression of those people and how uniquely different they are. Like they didn't have to discard anything about themselves mm. to create a powerful brand in the world. No, yeah, you're it's so different. So it was, um, can somebody... Richard, yeah, and, and Barb is also waiting to ask a question. Okay, so, Richard, you, no, you go I, ahead. I, I, just, I just wanted to know if, um, Brad Gallup was really his name doing it. <laughs> it is, it is his name. Is Isn't that, that amazing? Is that a happy coincidence, eh? <laughs> yes, and he gets he gets ripped about that a bit. I'm sure he does. <laughs> and he's a total sweetheart. I mean, he spent years in the military. So, you know, he does powerful work around trauma with yeah. what he would call warriors, you know, that <laughs> yeah, really cool. Barbara, yeah, you, you have a question. I said I'd get you on, so it, it's all yours yeah can you hear me yeah yeah okay. i have i have a cold and i'm in bed or i would pop my face on but <laughs> hi sandra hi so i i came on this um because i love you and i think you're brilliant and i'm in the process of rebranding a business that i was in for 25 years and then branding a new business with my husband and I. So I'm just, that's just like perfect. I'm just right in the mix of it. Um, and the question that I had is you keep talking about like the brand um, reflecting your core vision. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering like if you have like any questions or exercises that would support me in getting to the core vision. Like being the Enneagram seven, I can come up with lots of different core visions. Like, <laughs> like what, and I, I, and, and maybe I'm partly afraid of like, like just landing on one, because if I land on one, then I have to really commit and do it. But there's something in that process of coming up with core vision that is um, baffling me. Yeah. Well, I do. I mean, I have, I have a variety of things that I do with people when I work with them, mm -hmm. as you know, and, and a lot of it, like I do a very extensive intake and it's just sort of poking around so I can get a sense of the person and, and that, so that they start reflecting right. on what brings them alive and what is that intersection with their business. And I wasn't going to say this till the end, but I'm, I, um, Christian had this great idea that I could <laughs> do kind of a, uh, a little free branding course as a follow-up to this. So I'm going to run a three-day branding boot camp where you get just a taste of this and and you can start to see how simple it can be to clearly brand your business that would be amazing um when, and, when you showed each of those websites like i energetically felt them in my body without reading a word yeah and that's and that's the thing like i'm gonna i'm gonna share the link for this thing and christian will also yeah, don't don't worry about it, folks. If you, uh, um, I'll I will reshare it if you don't manage to get it down. Yeah. Anyway, there it is. So, um, one of the things that falls down, like people make a core vision, and then, like, say with Brad, like we both knew when we saw this back of the horse and it was dark, there was something that felt so right. It's it goes beyond words. The images speak so quickly to our unconscious that they're way more important than people think and having something that looks professional also especially if you're a coach like so many websites don't look professional like if you just look professional you're going to be ahead of the game like your web i don't think people ever hire us because of our websites but they want to see we have a legitimate business 
Yeah. And like, the images are really important. Like having high quality images that reflect that core vision, that the feeling you want to create. Like, like Brad's is all about, you know, serving the warrior community, these, these vets that have been so traumatized by serving the, our country. Um, you know, seeing all sorts of war and death. You know, how do they come back into their life? And there's, there's a way it, it has, to me, it was this mixture of, of honoring kind of the darkness that they've experienced and also holding the hope. And it doesn't say that anywhere, but that's kind of the feeling of it. And like for Rahini, she's got this incredible spiritual presence that I think is reflected in the kind of photos. I didn't show, I didn't scroll down to show you more, but you know, you just get a different feeling for each, you know, and then Peter has been like a executive in procurement for many years. And, and has this real practicality around how he sees this in business. You know, and, you, and so you see the, there's kind of different personalities work, but the images support that. That makes sense, Barbara? Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. I, I see you twice on my screen, so I'm not sure. Oh, <laughs> you yes, know. I'm just so powerful. I branded myself <laughs> twice on the screen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Sandra, I'm conscious that we're coming towards the end of the hour um, and it just seems to have zipped by. Um, I, I've really, really enjoyed and I just, just want to, and, and as always, I've learned lots. Um, so I, I really want to thank you for, for taking the time today. I want to also thank everybody else who's joined us and asked questions and um, put yourself out there. I had thank one last ask, question. Sorry. I just want to say thank you for asking me. Oh, Having no, it's um, a, a real pleasure. And um, I just had one last question. Do you have a date for your, your boot camp? Oh, yes. Yet? It's going to start next Tuesday. It'll just go for three days, the April 23rd through the 25th. And on the, on the 25th, I'm going to host a Zoom call. Like, I'm going to send out daily emails and videos. Uh -huh. and on the third day, I'll have a Zoom call to just uh, for any questions or clarifications. Excellent, lovely. And what time? What time will that be, or is that not? Is that to be fixed yet? Oh, I haven't set up the Zoom time. Okay, yet. that's fine. That's just, just probably sort of... around this time. It might sure. be at eleven a.m. Pacific, something like that. Cool. Ten to eleven tends to work for people in different parts of the world. Oh, fab. Well, well, thank you again. Um, it, it's I've really, really, really enjoyed. It's been wonderful. So um, I'm just going to stop the recording now.